Anyway, the, the lady that runs it, I think she calls it the Alabaster Box or the Secret Place, and she's been doing that for several years now. Uh, it's, I think it started up to be a women's meeting, but it ended up going more than that. There's a lot of men goes to too. Whenever her, her focus is on the Holy Spirit to bring the Holy Spirit into the meeting, and uh, I've, that's, this is the third meeting I've done for her now, just from from the from about last uh, December when when the doors again opened after lockdown, and I've done the three months for her now, and it's just there's an atmosphere in there. It's it's phenomenal. But people try for, tra travel from all over Ireland just to be there. Uh, and I tell you something, I, I count it special. I, I, I th it was wonderful. But uh, in doing that, I, I prepared my heart and prepared, prepared myself because preaching conference is slightly different than preaching pastoral messages. And I just love that conference stuff. And I'm stuck in still conference mode, so I might just take off just shortly. But anyway, whenever I sought the Lord concerning that conference, the Lord gave me a word, a beautiful, beautiful word for them. And, I, and the more I looked into it, I, actually, I had to stop writing because I was getting that much. I thought, I, I can't preach all that, just leave it alone. And, I, and as I began to, to download, I felt the very love of God. I felt the presence of God. And it was just like this. It, it was in my mind's head. It was like I climbed up on my daddy's knee. You know the wee child, when a child, when the daddy says, come on. And the child, the daddy sits there, and the child climbs up on its daddy's knee when it's hurting or feeling insecure. And daddy puts his arms around it and whispers in his ear, it's going to be okay. And I felt that heaven was talking to us. I felt the Lord was calling to us. I felt he was talking to me and saying, it's going to be okay, Joe. But out of that, a message began to evolve. A message began to result. And I believed that he wasn't just talking to me. And now because I preached that message yesterday, I believe it wasn't just a yesterday message, but I believe it's a message for our nation and it's a message for the body of Christ. He's about to tell us what he's going to do and I'm so looking forward to it. So let me tell you something. I want to talk to you on this little subject called help is on its way. Now look at somebody and say, it's okay now. Help is on its way. Help is on its way. So are we ready to go with this? Help is on the way. If you're watching this by YouTube, and I know you are right now, the numbers are beginning to increase out there. We're ministering to a lot of people now across, across the globe. It used to be I had to go there to do it, but now I can reach a lot of people just from this pulpit, and I thank God for that. Help is on its way. So let's start. I'm going to read you two scriptures. Psalm 44 and verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arms save them. But God, your right hand and your arm uh, uh, and, the, and the light of your countenance, the light of your countenance, it says, it means he's the king, but he's God and he's, he's lit in his glory. It simply means in a moment of time, he turned around and looked towards you. And when he looked towards you, the glory that's on him began to shine upon you. It's simply what it means. His glory began to light you up. He's, he's got, you've got his attention. He's looking straight at you. He knows where you are. He said, you didn't get the land by, by our own sword, by our own arm, our own strength, but by your hand and your arm and, the, and your light of your countenances upon us, but because you had a favor upon them. Everybody shout favor. Psalm 60, verse 11, it was a plead, it was a cry, and here's what they said. Give us, give us help from trouble. Give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. The doctors have done all they can. The psychologists have said all they can. But, oh God, we're turning to you. Give us help in trouble. For vain is the help of man. But through God we shall do valiantly. For it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Meetings like this don't start just on Sunday morning. Meetings like this don't even start midweek. Meetings like this take, take days and weeks to permeate through your thinking, to get all the, all the thoughts from heaven itself. But there's some meetings, there's some meetings that take longer than a week because I know it came from the mind of God and he's been working things out on your behalf for years, for decades. He saw moments in time coming, and so he prepares, and he prepares people, and he says, you need to come now. You need to get to that building. You need to switch on that, because God himself wants to say something to you that will help you in your time of trouble and be there for you in your time of need. God arranged that you would be here this morning. Look at somebody say, thank God you made it. God himself arranged that you would make it here this morning. 
There could have been obstacles. There could have been sickness. There could have been viruses. But God arranged. He needed you here this morning to hear this because there's something exceptional about to break loose. There's something awesome is about to happen. In fact, when God put this together for me, all of a sudden in the middle of a writing, I had, I, you know the music that I play? I had the music going in the background. I was caught up in this ecstasy in the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden I had a vision. And I saw an angel of the Lord. I saw an angel of the Lord, and he walked into the building. And when he walked into the I saw him. He walked in through a door. He walked around the back of the people. He walked right back, and he walked up the front. This majestic angel, and in a, in a vision I saw, he walked to the front. When he walked to the front, he raised what we would call a trumpet. And I understand, because I've seen this before, when he raised the trumpet, I expected him to blow the trumpet, and out of it would come a sound. Normally it comes a message for a people or for an individual or whatever. So I assumed it was just a message that's going to come forward from heaven itself. But instead of message coming out, a river began to flow through it. A river began to come out, and it flowed through all the congregation, and it flowed back through the door that I was looking at. And I realized there and then this wasn't a simple message, but this was an impartation. This was the beginning of a flow of God. This was something that God himself wanted to release in the people. He, did it, he just didn't stand on a hill and flood a nation. He started with a person. He started with a people. He started with individuals. And from then he was starting to move. I tell you, something good is about to happen. Something's going to break. Something's going to give. Life's about to take on another shape, another form, because the Holy Spirit has assigned something in this day. And this. I really believe I couldn't even have preached that this morning, apart from, except that from last January, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We've been preparing people for what God's going to do. Just last week, I talked about exceptional miracles that Laura and I have seen. You know, you can't even go and preach that in some churches because they'd say, nah, nah, that didn't happen, that never happened. But it did happen. And so I've been preparing your heart for this because God wants to do exciting and exceptional things. Look at somebody say, you're an exciting and an exceptional person. There's some things you can't work for. There's some things that you don't deserve. And there's some things that you just can't earn. It's called the favor of God. But when the favor of God comes on, everything changes in a second of time. I preached before on the favor of God. And I don't pull it out of a hat and say, let's preach that. I've got to know that that's what God wants to release at that moment of time. If he wants to do healing, then I'll preach on healing. I've got to know exactly what he's doing. As a prophet, I've got to be in that place to know the timings of Almighty God. Something's about to break. It's Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, A good name is rather uh, to be chosen than great riches. But it goes on and says, A loving favor rather than silver or gold, or pursuing favor. Pursuing favor. Instead of pursuing the silver and gold, instead of pursuing things, he says, pursue favor. Expect favor. Look for favor. Because favor changes everything in a second of time. Favor, according to the scripture, is better than fame or fortune. Favor, favor to me is like ice cream on an exceptionally hot day on Newcastle Beach. Look at somebody say, you've got me going now, you've got me going now. <laughs> favor, it's more valuable than silver or gold. The world chases after silver and gold, and they don't understand if you have favor, everything. People will give things to you. Things will happen to you that doesn't normally happen, even to people that has the silver and gold. Look at somebody say, I need the favor, I need the favor. Here's what it says in Proverbs 16 and verse 15. For favor is as a cloud as the latter rain. The Middle Eastern countries, they had two harvests. It was known in the Old Testament as the early rain and the latter rain. The early rain came in the first harvest, and it was a, a good harvest, but it wasn't a bountiful harvest, but it was enough to bring the crops in for to feed the multitudes. But they always looked for the second rain, called the latter rain, because when the latter rain came, it came after a dry period, and all of a sudden there was thunderous, thunderous rain come down. And when the water and the sun met together, it caused a bountiful harvest. It caused a super harvest. It caused what they called the biggest harvest. In fact, they would pray. They would pray that they pray that they would walk right, they would honor God, so that God would honor them with the latter rains, with the blessing rains. And then if they got away from God and chased after idols, the latter rains wouldn't come. 
The wedding comes, so they had no harvest. They had no harvest. But when the latter rain came, it produced a bountiful harvest. It caused what we would call a double portion. Look at somebody say, yeah, I need a double portion. It brought with it a double portion, the biggest harvest, the double harvest. A double harvest come in when the latter rain happens. Do you notice how it is God's desire? Always was, always will be. It is God's desire to pour out his favor, to pour out that that causes the double harvest to come into the lives of human beings. According to Deuteronomy chapter 8, when the latter rain, when the, when the, the double harvest, the double portion would hit, the Bible says then they would give them houses that they did not build. It would be they'd, dig, they'd get wells that they didn't dig, and they would have vineyards that they didn't plant. In other words, stuff would come to them that other men had worked a lifetime for, and it would just be theirs as a gift. The favor of God will make you the head and not the tail. Look at somebody say, I'll never be behind again. The favor of God will make you, oh, I feel something now. The favor of God will make you the head and not the, I think I'm going to have to cry my whole way through this. But the favor of God will make you the head and never the tail. The favor of God is the one that Psalm 1 that tells you it makes you like you're planted by the rivers of water, that your leaf will never fail, that, you, that your fruit will always turn up in a season, that you'll have a smile in the midst of the storms. It means whatever you put your hand to will prosper. Look at somebody say, put your hand on me quick. Put your hand on me quick. Whatever you put your hand to will prosper. It brings you in a place what I call an unlimited access. You and I will have unlimited access right into the very throne room of Almighty God because it's God. It's a sovereign act of God himself. Luke chapter 1 verse 20, Yet the angel of the Lord came on into Mary and said, Hello, or heal Mary, for thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with you. You need to understand according to the Bible, when the Lord is with you, you are truly blessed and you are highly favored. Just put your head up and look at somebody and smile. Now don't smile too hard or they'll think you're big headed and egotistical, but you've got to understand who you are. God is with you. He with you when you walked in. He's with you right now. He means he did to just to tell you that you're blessed and you're highly favored. It is the Lord himself that bestows this on you. You can't earn this. You can't go pleading and fasting for it. It's not going to happen. It's when God's light shines upon you, when he turns to you and said, hey, I like you. Let's go for this. All of a sudden, things begin to happen. It is the Lord. Isaiah 6 describes him as wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the one that wants to pour the fever of God upon you. He's the one, according to the scriptures, that sticks closer to you than a brother. Your brother might let you down, but God says, I'll never let you down. I'll run the race with you. I'll keep sitting with you. And even if you make a fool of yourself, look at somebody say, don't you just. Even if you made a fool of yourself, he said, I might laugh at you, laugh with you, but I'll get you up and we'll get going again. I'll stick closer than a brother. He's the one that calls the stars by name. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He's the one that made the sun stand still so that Joshua could finish the battle against the army. He's the one that opened the Red Sea. He's the one that spoke to the, a 90-year-old woman's womb so she could give forth a, 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 a son. Give us a night. Look at some say, I don't need that, I don't need that. He's the one, he, can, he can do anything but feel. Feeling is not a part of his nature. He doesn't know how to feel. He has no failures within him. He has no defeat on the inside of him. Winning is all he knows, and he is your heavenly father. He knows nothing else. But winning, there's no power like the power of our God. He upholds everything with the word of his power. And he said, he said, he said that you are blessed and highly favored. Look at somebody say, do you know who you're sitting beside this morning? A lot of God's kids, a lot of God's children running around feeling uh, uh, inferior, running around feeling a low self-esteem, inferiority complexes. You need to stop that. You're a child of the living God. There's no need to feel like that. You're a born-again, recreated child of the living God. God did something on the inside of you that day. Don't you understand? You might have an earthly family who treats you like a nobody, but your heavenly Father adopted you into his family, the royal family. He never mocks you. He never laughs at you. He never puts you down. He 
sends angels to watch over you and keep you. When you got born again, you were born into, adopted into the family of God. Not just into the family, but you became a part of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has an army. The kingdom of God has angels. The kingdom of God has provision that the government doesn't have. When the banks run out, the bank of heaven is still open. <sighs> And that God who owns all that and adopted you and, and chose you and called you and ordained you, he's the one that said, I call you blessed and I call you highly favored. It is God's idea to bless you in such a manner, in such a manner that you cannot even contain the blessings that he has for you. Don't let your circumstances fool you. That's the only thing that the devil has. He tries to put a circumstance in, get you to get a phone call, get you to get a postcard from somewhere, get you to watch or somebody. Hey, did you know what they're saying about you? That's all he has. I, I think in the nowadays they call that fake news. Look at somebody say fake news. That's all the devil has, fake news. He got no good news. He hasn't got any real news. He's got fake news. He lied to you. He'll tell you you're going to die young, and hey, you're 75 as it is. Let me tell you something. That can't happen. That can't happen. He'll tell you what more clean shirt will do you. He'll tell you all types of crazy things. It's fake news. I want to tell you something. God says, I'll bless you coming in, and I'll bless you going out. Don't be fooled by your present circumstances. Do not allow your present circumstances to, de to determine your tomorrows. You may not look highly favored at the minute. You may not even feel highly favored, but God has declared, yes, you are. I'm blessed. Look at somebody say, I'm blessed, and I'm highly favored. I challenge you. I challenge you this week. Why don't you, when you get up in the morning, looking in the mirror, tell yourself before you yawn, tell yourself, I am blessed and I'm highly favored. By lunchtime, when you go to pull your sandwiches out before you eat them, say to yourself, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. When you go to, go to bed at night, before you close your eyes, just say, wow, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Why don't you start and do that instead of telling yourself some fake news? Why don't you tell yourself the real stuff? Tell it and then begin to tell yourself, if anybody's going to get promoted, it's going to be me. If they're going to give one away, they're going to give it to me. Look at somebody say, I'm after two of them. I'm going to have more than enough so as I can give you one and give you one and give you one. I'll just give mine away now because God's going to bless me. He's going to give it to me more and more and more. You need to tell yourself you're a child of the living God. A child of the living God. All things are possible. All things are possible. I need to tell you something. I know where you are because you call me because we're all in the same boat and you get held up. You get held up. And you walk with God. Sometimes you get so frustrated because you get held up. There's hindrance spirits. There's all types of stuff. And you've got to wait on God doing things. But sometimes you get held up. But I've got a word for you. If you're held up, hold on. Look at somebody say, hold on. you just got to hold on. Because here's where this whole scripture, but this is what I'm preaching. Here's where it birthed from this scripture I'm about to tell you. I saw something. And Daniel, and Daniel, we all know the teachings. But in Daniel, the Bible says at one point, Daniel's not just praying for himself. He's not even praying for the king. He's praying for the nation of Israel. He's praying. He's praying a national prayer for the deliverance of Israel. And let me tell you why he's in the midst of this and he's praying. He's actually got so determined in his prayer that he started to fast. The Bible says he fasted 21 days. Sometimes when you get praying and praying and praying, there's no breakthroughs. You have to move into the next gear and you fast and pray. He's fasting and praying for three weeks. On the end of three weeks, he had an angelic visitation. Wouldn't you fast for 21 days and you thought you were going to get one of them? Let me tell you something. Uh, you, you don't worry about angelic visitations. The angelic visitations, which is an angel bringing a message from God. You can get a message from God now without waiting on an angel. Look at somebody say, Joe, you might as well be an angel because I'm getting a message from God this morning. And here's what it says in Daniel chapter 10. And verse 20, this angel brought this message, said a whole bunch of stuff, but this one bit in particular is what got a hold of me. He said, then the angel said, know you not, know you not then wherefore for I have come. He said, now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. You we got to understand this, because I know you've read that before, but you may not have understood the timings of it and what it actually meant. 
But this angelic being that came to Daniel after 21 days fast actually crossed timelines to get to where Daniel was. He came out of the future with all that was going on, jumped the, jumped the timelines and came and spoke to Daniel, bringing him help at that moment of time, but also bringing him some information. He said it this way, and you've read it so you'll understand this. He says, the angel says, from the first day you prayed. Look at somebody say, the first day. From the first day you prayed, God heard and dispatched me and sent me from the very throne room of God. I was on my way here, but I got held up somewhat because in the heavenly there was a fight going on down there. And then he names who he was fighting, the prince of Persia and the prince of Grecia. Now let me bring this to your attention. Prince of Persia, that is is Iran and Iraq and that region down there. At that moment of time, when Daniel was praying, Persia did not even exist. There was no such place as Persia. There was no such place as Iran. There was no such place as Iraq. It didn't exist. It was centuries later before the kingdom of Persia, the empire of Persia arrived. So when this angel came down and says, I'm fighting something, I'm fighting a prince of Persia, on earth it hadn't even happened. The prince of Persia, there was no Persia, it hadn't happened. The nation of Persia, Persia hadn't even formulated. It was not known. It was a group of people in mud huts somewhere and a few tents and a camel somewhere. But let me tell you something, the angel warred and fight was something out there. And he came back. And he said, I've been in a battle, boy. I've been in a battle. He's fighting with an army, with a nation. Daniel probably scratched his head and said, where's that? Where, where, where's, where's Persia? Because Persia did not exist. He said, let me tell you, when I fight here, I have to go back and fight him. And let me tell you, after I've defeated him, I've got to beat, I've got to beat the, 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 the prince of Grecia. Grecia didn't even exist. In fact, the prince of Persia, Persia, the empire of Persia became a war uh, empire and took over half the nation, but they, they were beaten by Grecia. So Grecia came in after that. But here's this angel who arrived into your man's kitchen and said to them, I'm already fighting stuff right there that you don't even know anything about. When I saw it, I got it. Look at somebody say, he got it, he got it, he got it. He said, and he said, this is such a war that I actually had to make a phone call, an emergency call to heaven and say, can you send Michael the archangel? Nobody fights that boy. He said, can you send Michael down here to help me? And God dispatched Michael. And he said, if you hang on a minute, Daniel, Michael's on his way to help us. Too. You need to understand God is dispatching stuff from heaven just for you, no matter where you are, what you're going through. He's dispatching stuff for Ireland. He's dispatching stuff for, from heaven itself across the nations. This is our time. The angels of the Lord is coming. God was dispatching. And here's the bit that I saw. God was not only helping, dispatching to help him right there, God was actually battling ahead of time for stuff that Daniel didn't even know anything about. God has, God has got your destiny in mind. He has got your purpose in mind. We're fighting with a 10-minute battle here over something here, looking for this and looking for that. God is interested in your purpose and your destiny. And he knows what devils and what trials and what purposes out there trying to stop you. And before you ever get there, there's been a battle ahead. Good on. God is already ahead of you fighting the battles. Not that you're set, this that you're going through right now has already been fought in the heavenlies. The angels have already been warned. The angel, this thing that you're going through did not take God by surprise. He saw it coming. So he already dispatched the angels 10 years in advance, 7 years in advance. He already set them in advance. This that you're going through right now has already got a foregone conclusion. You're going to win. Look at somebody say, I'm going to win. In other words, God is fighting. He's already set the battle in advance for the kids that hasn't arrived yet. Put your hand on your stomach and, and your womb and say, one's coming, one's coming. Look at somebody say, change that, two's coming, two's coming. Look at somebody say, don't stop now, we're on a roll, three's coming, three's coming. God's already fighting the battle ahead of time for the kids that you don't have right now. He's already fighting for the business that you haven't even established. Before you ever say, let's open the business, God has already been doing warfare ahead of you, so he's clearing the path for you. Oh, Lord, I wish you were getting this. He's already battled for the cruise that you haven't went on yet. Look at somebody say, but we're going, we're going. 
He's, on, he's already done warfare for the mission field that you're afraid to go on. He's already done battle ahead of time for you. He's already done battle and warfare for the home that you have not bought yet. He already knows. He's already done battle and warfare for the healing that hasn't yet manifest in your body. He's already been doing battle and warfare for the ministry that you haven't even birthed yet. Oh, I got such a satisfaction to understand no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, that the angels of the Lord are ahead of me, fighting like mad, clearing away because Joe's coming. Look at somebody say, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. Your greatest crime, your greatest sin, is when you sit down and do nothing when all the angels of God has fought tooth and nail just to make a way for you. Look at somebody say, Michael will come even if you if you need him. I'm always talking about you there. That archangel if necessary. Something's gonna shift. Something's shifting. Something's given. Something's about to break. The ladder's on its way. It might have been posted on Friday. You're not going to get it to Monday. It may be already in the post. The ladder's on its way. The phone call, the invite, the opening, the closure. That that's inside you needs to wither up and die and maybe already has. You just need to raise your hands and praise the Lord. Who knows? But God's doing something spectacular. When you begin to speak like this, when you begin to say things and say, I'm blessed and I'm highly feared, let me tell you something. Demons begin to, they back off real quick. They begin to put their sunglasses, pull their hood up, and begin to move to one side to get out of the road. And until your sickness that's had a grip on you begins to loosen its grip, it wants to see if you're serious. It wants to see if you know what you're talking about. But it loosens its grip for a moment or two. And if you get real serious and say, back off, back off, in Jesus' name, it begins to let go and disappear out the window. Wow, look at somebody say, be gone, be gone in Jesus' name. Your self-esteem will salute you on the way out the door. I want to tell you some of them rivers of living water will begin to blow. I saw the angel put the trumpet up and the river began to flow. There's a river flowing. We need to get in, Dad. We need to get in. Fever. Because we think this fever is just a temporary fix. It's not. Never was. Never will be. It's a permanent thing. It comes and it's permanent. Psalm 23 and verse 6, it says, Goodness and mercy shall follow me. How long? For two weeks? All the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Goodness is what? He gives me what I don't deserve. Mercy is what? What I, uh, he spares me from that I do deserve. But goodness and mercies follow me. And there's people and they worry because, well, what if it runs out? How could it run out? It's God's supply. God's supply has never run out. He says, I can give you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you're ever able to ask or even think. He's the one that says, I want to cause the blessings to overtake you. Oh, I love the overtaking blessings. He said, he prepares a table before me, even in the presence of mine enemy. He said, he anoints my head with oil because I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Look at somebody say, so am I, so am I. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That's the peaceful places because I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Sephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, and he is mighty. Here's what the Bible says. He saves. That's not your salvation, by the way. That's the rescue package. That's when he brings you out of whatever held you. And he rejoices over you with joy. I can't hardly believe it. God's rejoicing over me. Yes, he's smiling at you right now. He rests in his love. He will joy over you with singing. He's singing to you. He's, God is singing to you. You need to stop talking long enough to hear the melodies of God. He said, I need, to, I need you to wake up, Joe, and understand I've given you the keys of the kingdom. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Do you remember when you were getting married, Neil? Do you remember you're leaving the house? You're all groomed up and looking spectacular and looking like 16. Do you remember that? You go out the door and just messing about with you. know. I said, Son, one thing more before you go. He said, what's that, Dad? I said, let's leave the keys of the house. <laughs> on the hall table. Just, just put your keys where they said, just leave the keys on the hall table because you're not, it's not that you're not welcome here anymore, but you have to knock to get in. <laughs> he just looked at me, wasn't sure if it was serious or not. We were just messing. We were just messing. But God says, son, I, I, I want to give you the key on the hall table. I don't want you to leave it. I want you to take it with you because I want to give you the keys 
unlimited access to the throne of God, endued with power from on high, with the knowledge that the enemy will come in one way, but he'll get such a black eye and such a thick ear that he'll have to take off seven ways. And the Bible promises me, if the enemy has stole from me, God will restore, that enemy will have to restore sevenfold sevenfold whatever he stole from me. Oh, I'm going to sit down and calculate what he owes me. He'll have to pay a pretty penny, I'll tell you something. When fever comes, when fever comes, it changes everything. It brings with it, according to the scriptures, sudden prosperity or sudden success. Where you've been blocked up, held back for 20 years, nothing shift, nothing moved. But suddenly, suddenly, when fever comes, it flips the coin. And where you were broke, now you're plenty. And where you're little, now you're a heap. It flips the coin for you. Fever flips the coin. In Proverbs uh, 10 and verse 22, it says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and it adds no sorrow with it. There's riches that you can get and you'll cry all night even if you have them. But when God blesses you, when God blesses you, it doesn't hold you. God holds you, but he shows you what to do with it. Let me tell you, when Israel left Egypt, after 430 years of slavery, God brought them out. And he said, he said, when you're coming out, he said, I know they have mistreated you there for years, but I want you to know you're not coming out empty. Look at somebody say, I'm not coming out empty. Here's what he says in, in Psalm 105, verse 37. It says, and he brought them forth with silver and with gold. And there was no feeble person, not one feeble person amongst their tribes. God did something. Let me, they were slaves. They had nothing. They owned nothing. They, they just had the shoes that was on their feet and the clothes that were on their back. And God says, I'm going to deal with this. Not only are you going to leave this mess, but I'm going to bring you out with plenty. Look at somebody say, I'll, that's my middle name, plenty. I'm going to bring you out with plenty. I'm going to bring you out with silver and with gold. The Bible says, and they were slaves and had nothing. And overnight, overnight they became the wealthiest nation in the planet. God has ways. I, I can't hardly fathom how to do it. He doesn't share the secrets of how it's done. He just says, sit back and enjoy the ride. Fasten your safety belt. I tell you, God can fill your purse. He can do something. Whereas he said, he said, I've watched how they have fleeced you, how they have robbed you. For 400 years, you have worked for them and never got a penny. Look at somebody say, I believe I know what they're talking about. I've been on pay, a level pay rates, under, underrated all the days of my life. And he's, here's what he said when they come out. He said, I'll give you 400 years of payback. I'll make up for what was lost. I'll give you your holiday pay, your maternity leave. He said, I'll give you your Christmas bonus all in one go. And so he did. He was going to restore to Sam, you need to get ready. You need, you need to get yourself by a safe. Buy a safe and don't, don't tell Dorothy the combination because God, there's, that devil stole, that devil lied. When God starts to heap it back on you sevenfold, you don't know how to start to do it. If you did, you'd mess it. But the fever of God snaps in and makes something happen. When the fever of God comes on, it makes nobodies become somebodies overnight. Look at somebody I'd say, I believe I qualify. Esther, according to the book of Esther, she was an orphan. She was a slave girl. She had no hope. She had no future. As a slave girl, you don't have anything. You don't even have a CV. No hope, no future. An orphan girl, a slave, living in a, in a, in a minority group. And then the nation went ahead and pulled a beauty contest. And somebody persuaded her to go. And so she entered in a beauty contest. And let me tell you, the favor of God hit that girl. And they couldn't help but look. She became a looker. Look at somebody say, she's a looker. Suddenly they couldn't bypass her. And let me tell you, they said, you can win this competition. You are to do the winner. You know what the prize was? You became queen. She went from an orphan girl and a slave girl with no future, and she became queen of the whole nation because of the favor of God. I'll tell you, the favor of God makes nobodies into somebodies overnight. When the favor of God comes upon you, they pick you out of the crowd. Even if you're not qualified, they'll pick you out of the crowd and they will promote you even ahead of your time. I wrote this and I didn't want to, over, I didn't want to overlook this statement, but the least likelies becomes the most likelies. Look at somebody say, I like that, Pastor, I like that. The least likelies becomes the most likelies. 
David's up on that. I'm almost finished now. But David's up there in the plain, up in the hills, minding a few sheep. Nobody's there. Nobody's there for hundreds of miles around but just David. He's up there with his, with his uh, 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 harp, or maybe it's a Spanish guitar, maybe it's an electric guitar with battery and all that, and he's just sitting, there's nobody up there but him. And he's practicing, he's practicing, and then he gets real good, and the sheep begins to gather and he's like, and the sheep's going, there's nobody up there. And he's thinking to himself, one day, Somebody's bound to notice me. Who's going to notice him? Nobody knows he exists. Nobody knows he lives. So he starts to write his own songs. He writes his music. And he's singing to the sheep. You know, I've said this before, but he gets to go to the little female sheep and comes over and sings, Only you. <laughs> and the sheep, the lambs are going in the background. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba. <laughs> And he's up there, he says, he's nothing else to do all day. So he's becoming an expert in the music world and thinking to himself, will anybody ever hear me? Will anybody ever know? Till the fever hits. And the fever hits. A man who writes worship music on the hills that only the sheep hear. Suddenly now in the 21st century, we can open the book and sing the psalms and sing the hymns with them. When the fever of God comes in, you don't have to have a business card. God knows where you live. He knows who you are. He'll shift heaven and earth for you whenever the fever of God begins to hit. The fever of God is what I saw. It came out like a river. It flowed through the people, saturated the people. I know whenever they would go home, they'd go home with the river, and it flows into their houses. But it went out through the door. It went out through the door into the nations. So I knew, I preached this yesterday. Maybe I preached it better this morning, who knows. But let me tell you something. But, but in that conference, I preached this. I could see it. I could sense it. I could feel it. But when I got home, I thought, no, that's more than just a conference message. That's a national message. This one that people need. People need to understand what's hitting, what's going, what's in so as they can get in. When the fever of God comes in, it crushes your enemy beneath your feet. That that stalks you suddenly takes off in another direction and you never hear from it again. Never hear. I, I prayed with a woman one time who owed, I think it was, was it, uh, she to my 12,000, I think it was, uh, in, in, in uh, store cards, business cards. She owed 12,000. Just shopping. 12,000. She's in a prayer line because she couldn't pay it and she's crying her eyes and they're going to take stuff from off her. <sighs> Took up all the faith I had to muster up to pay for it. I've never prayed for a 12,000 pound debt on a credit card in my life. Never prayed for that. But in the favor of God, God does something. I asked her many to many months later, I said, whatever happened? She says, she says, they never sent me an or invoice. She says, says, years later, I've never got an or invoice. She says, someone help, and I don't know if somebody paid it, or the, it, it went through the shred machine, but she says, I don't pay. I never had to pay. Look at somebody said, will you pray over my credit card? <laughs> <laughs> when the fever of God comes, supernatural things take off. Your ministry has a different edge to it that never had before. Your intercession takes on a different edge. You catch more feast, Joe. <laughs> Imagine going feasting with Jesus. Wow. Things happen that cannot happen. Your intellect cannot do this. Your intellect will carry you a certain way. Your, 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 uh, your creative ability will, will get you a certain direction, but can't carry you through. But the favor of God... It always amazes me. I've walked with people who walked, lived in the favor of God. It became a trophy to them. People still talk about them. The day I was at that conference yesterday, I met a girl, she came up and she says, uh, I was in Koshalin, Koshalin, or whatever you call it, Koshalin. I was in Koshalin 20 odd years ago. She says, I remember what you prophesied over me 20 odd years ago in Koshalin. I said, I remember it fondly. I said, do you remember Pavel? Pavel. And she said, how could you ever forget him? She said, I, she said nobody there would remember me anymore because she says, I left and I went and I was in Ireland and all the rest of it. But she said, she said, how could you ever forget that man? And I don't think it's what he taught or the way he walked or the way he dressed. I think because there was a fever on him. 
men and women that walk in favor, they leave footprints behind. They leave a memory. They leave a mark. I'm not smart enough to do all this on my own. I don't have the intelligence. I have to look to Laura. When I send a text, I have to give it to Laura and say, correct that for me. And she'll say, where do I start? <laughs> a comma, a full stop. What's that? What's that? <laughs> where does it go? Is that an apostrophe? Or is it just a dirty mark on my phone? I don't know. But So, so uh, I'm not the smartest guy on time. I'm not that guy either, but I'm not the smartest guy. But this is a real smart woman. And God teamed us up. When we got married, we became a real team. So in my weak areas, she can become my strength. And in the areas that I, that, that, that I could get off on, she'll say, we need to talk. <laughs> when she says, we need to talk, it usually means you'll sit and say nothing. And we'll say <laughs> but in other words, she says, you need to listen to what I have to say. Now, it's taken me a hundred years to understand it. I, 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 I know, but I'm, I'm just complimenting this morning. But I understand when we walk with God, it's a whole different ballgame. The churches nowadays want to exclude God. They just want programs, programs, programs. Well, what would we do in another program this morning when God wanted to interfere with the program? What would have happened? We would have missed a moment. I don't want programs. I want God. Now, if God's got a program for me, I'll run it. But I want to be in such a place where if he wants to shift the program, I'm ready to shift with him. So this morning, I saw it. I saw the river coming straight out of an angelic trumpet and flowing through a people. I want to lay hands on you this morning. I don't know if I'll prophesy you, but I, I, I just want to lay hands on you. There's an anointing. There, there, there's an authority. There's an anointing. There's, there's the favor that God grants you to do certain things. I want to lay hands on you this morning to kick the fever off. And the fever comes. Life can change in a hurry. So we we're ready for this. If you're not ready for this, it's fine by me. It's fine by me. I don't have it to give. I'm just a channel that the Spirit of God uses. But, oh, God, I, I long for that favor. I know what it's like. I've seen it many, many times before. I know when it's not there, but I know there's times and seasons when the favor of God kicks in. The, oh, there's no stopping. What, ah, you couldn't even imagine what God, is, what God has ahead for you. He's already got the war angels that fought this battle ahead for you so that things could come. Things could come. How are we going to do this? Are you, are you uh, enough energy left? Uh, by the way, I forgot to welcome you back in. She was back home seeing her mom back in, in Poland for three weeks. You wait, three weeks, two weeks, two weeks. So I, I forgot to, in, in my excitement this morning, I forgot to welcome you back and thank you. But uh, <coughs> if you want to come up, you want to come up and maybe sing that last song again. And when we'll start singing it again, if you'll just come up real quick, let me lay hands on you. I do believe I have enough energy. Uh, 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 have you any energy left? You? you were praying for people for about two hours yesterday, weren't you? About two hours. I'd say they turned around, they end up, they were sitting down doing it. Oh yes, I like it when you when you, when there's that much anointing going on, you have to actually sit down to finish the job. It's wonderful. So you, you, you could pray for a few folks this morning. Have you enough energy left? She has. <laughs> she hasn't. She has. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, but the main thing is the favor of God. We need to get the favor of God flowing in and through your life. You ready for this? We'll sing this one time, and then we're going to start. And, uh, and we're going to let the favor of God, the flow of God, move through you. Now, if you don't want to come up, it's fine with me. But if you do, then just trust God. Believe God for it. Now, you can't come up this watch on YouTube. Uh, you can't come up here. But at least you can believe God. Uh, 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 we, can't, we can't put the song on either because it would be copyrighted and they'd, they'd take us off YouTube for doing it. So you just have to believe God for yourself. Lay your hands on your wife or wife, lay your hands on your husband or speak them words or make a phone call or do whatever you have to do but get the river flowing. I believe with you now. Put your hand over your heart right now. We're going to believe with you, everybody that's watching somewhere, that the river of God will begin to flow and bring the favor of God with it into our lives. Then them doors will begin to open. God, we make ourselves available. Whatever you want us to do, wherever you want us to go, however you want to do it, we are believing right now in Jesus' name. Let it start. Let it start. Okay. Okay.